Okay, we're going to show you a brief demonstration on ProtoWizard 5 Axis. Most of the toolbars and most of the commands and menus will be, remain the same. We've done this on purpose so to keep the interface for 5 Axis programming very much like the 4 Axis programming. So if you have two machines, one 4 Axis and one 5 Axis, you'll be very comfortable using ProtoWizard for both. As always in ProtoWizard, you're going to select what type of operation or type of machining strategy you would like to do. We're going to do a three-sided ring. Now notice that we have three different curves. And if you, if you see the, r the red line in here, that is our rough out curve. It follows the shape of the part, but staying away from it. And this will completely cut that raw material out of the way. You'll even notice that there's a little line coming off of here horizontal. This is to break one half of the cutout versus the other half of the cutout. And you'll see that in the video here in a little bit. Now in the normal four axis world, the next thing you guys would probably do is do your two sided flip. But in five axis, the two sided flip will eventually uncover the entire ring. We don't want to do that yet. We want to leave it as solid as we can for the most we can for the longest period of time. So what we're going to do is do a rotary operation right now. Now normally you would go ahead and do your two-sided flip now and clean this out. But because we have these uh, pieces under the head, we're going to do a special type of cutting operation. And what I'm going to do is go back and select my tool, change my feed rate to 1000. I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I don't really care what the depth is, so I make it like 25 or whatever. Now here's the key. I want to rotate this around. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and rotate this around the maximum of 110 degrees. And it so happens I know there are 12 of these ellipses going around there. So I'm going to go ahead and say we're doing a 12-sided part, like so. The rest of the parameters we'll leave alone. Now the last thing you would do is go ahead and do your two-sided flip. Okay, so let's just look at a couple of these real quick. What does our top curve toolpath look like? And you can see the green line around there represents the toolpath. And what does our rotary look like? Pretty common. We told it to go all the way out to the edges, or beyond the edges, plus and minus 10 millimeters, remember. What does our multi-sided flip look like? Well, it looks just like that. But 12 of them and they go all the way around the part. You also have your two-sided flip just like you would normally see before except for you no longer have a core file in here. So let's see how that looks actually on the real machine. Okay, this is how it looks inside of the machine. You've got your piece of wax in the fifth axis. The very first thing it's going to do is rotate up 90 degrees to our flip position so it can cut out the top roughing cut. So now it moves around the, the shape of the part. At this time it's going to lift up, flip the part over, and do the bottom side. So this will be our bottom roughing cut. Now what it's going to do is rotate up and it's going to bring it all the way back around to a negative 110 degrees and start doing the roughing passes. And if you recall the next operation in this process is going to rotate the ring around and come in to just below the head and begin to cut out all those 12 little windows.
Now here is the finish part of the ring. It is just cutting past the shank right now and cutting past the little support that was left in. And we're finished.